Hi everyone, I'm Patrick from Assembly AI. Autonomous agent projects such as AutoGPT are currently all over the internet. You can set a goal for your agent, such as do some market research on a product and write me a report, and then it will go to work and come up with all the necessary steps to achieve this goal all on its own. So in this video, I want to show you four cool projects slash frameworks you can use to easily build autonomous agents. I show you how to use them and quickly explain how they work and what the difference between them are. So we go over AutoGPT, Baby AGI, Camel, and then one more project that maybe can be used to rule them all. And at the end, I also want to mention some of the limitations. So let's get started. The first and most popular project is AutoGPT. So this got over 100,000 stars on GitHub in just three weeks, which is unbelievable. This is an experimental open source attempt to make GPT-4 fully autonomous. So you can set up an agent and then give it a goal and then it will go to work on its own and tries to achieve this goal. So I will show you a demo in a moment. And what makes this work is, first of all, it is powered by GPT-4 under the hood. It also uses GPT-3.5 for some smaller, simpler tasks like file storage and summarization. And what makes it powerful is first it gets internet access so it can search whatever information you need. And the second important part is long-term and short-term memory management. So for this, it uses vector stores and can do semantic search over embeddings. So basically the AI can learn from past experiences and all of this together makes it extremely powerful and setup is pretty simple so you simply need to clone this project and install the dependencies then you need to set up your open AI API key and you can also configure more stuff like for example which vector store you want to use and then you can run the app so let me give you a quick demo so here I've already set up everything locally and then I can simply run python m auto gpt then it will ask me for a name so let's call our AI assembly AI GPT next it will ask me to describe the role so here let's say this is an AI designed to teach me about assembly AI and now we can enter up to five goals for example we can say search assembly AI then find the docs page and then summarize the docs and what I can do with their API and then simply enter and now it will go to work. So now you see it is thinking and now you can see the thoughts of the AI and the reasoning and plan. So it says, I think the best next step would be to use the Google command. The reasoning is since I am not familiar with assembly AI, I need to gather more information. And now the plan is use the Google command, browse the website to find the docs page and then summarize it. So now we can, it asks for permission. So you can also remove this, but this is a bit dangerous if you just let it go on its own. So I type yes, and now it will continue with the next step. And now you see it got some results. So now it knows about assembly AI and now it's thinking some more. And here are the next thoughts. So based on the search result, I found the assembly AI website. I can use the browse website command to find the docs page. And then again, it will ask me for permission and so on. So yeah, this is how auto GPT works and how you can use it. The second cool project is Baby AGI. So this is more like an AI powered task management system. And what both projects have in common is that both Baby AGI and AutoGPT have an autonomous agent that tries to solve some tasks and both use a vector store under the hood to store intermediate results and learn from the experiences but there are some critical differences. The first important difference is the size of the project. So while AutoGPT is very large with multiple thousands of lines of code, Baby AGI is intentionally kept small. So all the code fits into one Python file with at the moment 468 lines of code. 
So this is the first difference. The second important difference is that baby AGI acts on a list of tasks and then tries to prioritize them, while auto GPT tries to act with one task at a time. And the last important difference is that here in baby AGI, everything is done with an LLM call. So by using GPT-4, and this doesn't have the ability to use the internet, for example, so here we have three important steps. So first we have a task creation agent that comes up with a task list. And this is done with an open AI call with this prompt. Then it uses a prioritization agent. So here it tries to prioritize a task list. And again, this is simply a open AI call with this prompt here. And lastly, it uses an execution agent. So here it executes a task task. And again, this is simply a call to the OpenAI GPT-4. So here again, remember this doesn't use the internet, but simply uses the language model to solve the task. So let's see this in action. So to set this up, you also clone the project, install the dependencies and set your API keys. And then you can run Python baby agi.py and the task is stored in a .env file. So here we set teach me about neural networks and now it will develop a task list. So here it came up with the task list. So it said, sure, here's a task list to help you learn about neural networks. First, understand the basics of neural networks. Second, learn about activation functions. Third, understand backpropagation and so on. And then it will reprioritize those tasks and continue with the next one. So here I stopped the program. But yeah, basically, this is how baby AGI works to solve a task list and help you with task management. The third project is camel. And this is really fascinating because the approach is quite different. First of all, camel stands for communicative agents for mind exploration of large scale language model society. And here it sets up multiple agents that interact with each other and do a role playing session. So in this example, we give it the task, develop a trading bot for the stock market. And then it sets up two AI agents. And the first one plays the role of an AI assistant. And the second one plays the role of an AI user. And then they start a role playing session and interact with each other and then try to solve the task together. So in my opinion, this approach is really fascinating and also works quite well. So let's try it out. So to run this, we can also clone the project. And then, for example, we can run this script in the examples, the role playing example, where we give it the task, develop a trading bot for the stock market. So let's run Python and then this script and see what we get. So here both agents start the role playing session. And first the AI user gives the first instruction, install necessary Python libraries. And then the AI assistant comes up with the solution. So here it gives to install necessary Python libraries. And then here the text, what we need to install and also the command pip install numpy pandas and so on. Then the AI user gives gives the next instruction. Now collect financial news and social media data. And then the AI assistant responds. Here's the solution to collect the financial news and social media. And then here it uses an API and gives the code. And then here I stop the script. So yeah, this works really well here. And this is a super fascinating approach to solve a task with a role playing session with multiple AI agents. And the last framework you can use to implement all of those agents is Langchain. So if you don't know what Langchain is yet, then I highly recommend checking out our other video on our channel. I will link this here. So Langchain has a great blog post that I recommend here, um, uh, autonomous agents and agent simulations where they make a comparison. And if you use Langchain to implement those, then you have a lot of flexibility. So you can easily switch the underlying language model, you can easily switch the vector store, it allows connectivity to the Langchain tools and to the ecosystem in general. So for example, to set up auto GPT, you can say from Langchain.experimental import auto GPT and then follow this tutorial here. The same with baby AGI. So this time we import baby AGI.
eye. And for example, you can easily hook this up with tools. And for camel, there is not yet a class, but you can also follow this guide and then define your own camel agent class. And this is also simple to set up. So yeah, I highly recommend checking out the Langchain framework to build those autonomous agents. And again, check out this very cool blog post here. And the last thing I wanna mention are some pitfalls because of course not everything is perfect yet and it's far from reaching an AGI status. But the creators know this, they mentioned this themselves that those frameworks are highly experimental. And I found this very cool blog post, Auto GPT Unmasked, that I will also link in the description. So here, the author goes over some of the pitfalls and I briefly want to mention some of them. So um, one major drawback at the moment are the sky high costs. So it is very expensive to let this running, especially with GPT-4 at the moment. Then one problem, it often gets stuck in an endless loop and doesn't know what to do next. And then there's also a legitimate criticism that vector databases might be an overkill solution. So yeah, I recommend that you read through this article by yourself. Again, the link will be in the description. All right, I hope you now have a good overview of those frameworks. Let me know in the comments if you built a cool project with them. I would love to know about this and then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.